Good evening, this is Jamie of the Druid Diaries. Uh, you see behind me one of my new staffs. Uh, it's uh, Beth, a birch staff, and I found it on someone's lawn, one of my neighbors. And I went up to the door and I said, ah, oh, that stick, uh, might I have that? Would that be okay if you gifted that to me? And she said, go ahead, take it. I know nothing about it, just take it, it's yours. So I did. And there were some other things that happened along the way with that staff, but something I noticed that made it really truly feel like mine is it felt happy in my hand. You can see it's not a perfectly straight one. There you go. But it's it's lovely. And the birch is very clean and bright and it's a bit of an S-curve in it. It's very comfortable to walk with. And I've used it in a couple of rituals, both of them being... Uh, the Druid Network's Peace Intention Rituals. And I know, it's just a joyful presence. It's like the staff responds to me. So I feel, regardless of its path to get to me, that it belongs with me. And I'm at peace with that now. And I might say, I don't really desire to do anything much to it. I have thought that for some rituals, perhaps in the future, that I would like to tie fresh herbs with it, probably with a piece of hide, um, most likely deer hide and uh, then let them dry there and they bless the staff they bring their energy to the good energy of the staff and then they can be used uh, recycled for uh, teas or smudges and so again they can be a blessing in other ways the other staff is also a birch and it was also resting on a lawn and I would pass by this long slender branch and I thought oh gee that's an interesting branch because it appears to be dark on one side and light on another isn't that odd because small birch branches just have a beautiful reddish bark and then when as they get bigger they get this beautiful white with the the black markings on it and I thought wow isn't that odd it just makes me really uh tie into the solstice, the dark half of the, of the year and the light half of the year. Uh, the birch uh, is uh, used in the, the Owen uh, tree calendar as being, you know, for this part of the year. And it is uh, considered magical. I think all trees are magical in their own way. I keep losing my cozy hood here, which is kind of helping my neck tonight to feel warm and cozy um, and I am and I've said this before uh, an artist and I do write a bit so that's the sort of bardic energy there but all trees have a magicalness to them and uh, we all can engage with them in various ways and be open to responding to one another so who knows what's yes, yet to be found. But this other uh, staff, or potential staff, I found had mold. It wasn't any kind of strange brownishness, but there was a black mold on there. And I was saying to someone, oh, you know what, that was disappointing to find that, but yet I don't feel I'm done with it. So why don't you just peel it off? You know, just clean the bark right off. I thought, oh, of course, yeah, I can do that. And... Uh, Again, not perfectly straight, and that's fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, staff doesn't have to be perfectly straight. And some people actually really prefer them to have some interesting little angles and twists and turns. But the point being, nearing the top, which would be the part that was closest to the trunk of the tree, because it's thicker, and you put the narrower part at the bottom, that um, it angles slightly. And I thought, well, there's a point there where it's going to angle. I think I'll just leave the bark on that stretch because it looks good. And what if I put a design in there, a sim some symbolism in there regarding the solstice? So I want to carve a design into that upper area once the lower part is cleaned off. And probably I will rub fat into that, you know, moisturize it, condition the, the wood. I'll research that. I know of some good woodworkers to ask about it. And um, that we, I want to represent the light and, and dark halves of the year. And I want to 
put some Celtic knotwork in there and I want to represent the earth, the moon and the sun and the constellations or some minor and or some major, the little and great bears and the pole star should be really, you know, oriented properly on the staff. So that's rather a lot. I even thought, oh, you know, oh, and maybe I need some staves in there, something, you know, to symbolize maybe the name of the month, the Beth. Uh, who knows? I'm also very drawn to the Norse runes, and uh, these are both uh, part of my my uh, lineage. So that's cool. But it, if you're drawn to those things, you, I, in my opinion, you should explore them whether they're part of your DNA lineage or, or cultural lineage or not. You know, there's always a reason. You know why you're towards something or whether that thing itself seems to reach out and say ah you know we need to talk we need to connect somehow they're either a stepping stone they have maybe a message for you they have a teaching for you I don't think they discriminate that's something human beings tend to do so yeah explore and nature talks to us if we are open to listening and it doesn't matter who you are or where you are you know that's that's the way of it just always be respectful and uh, be a good listener that's important so I am really happy with with these staffs and uh, we'll see what happens and when and if I do get to work further on the one that I associate with the light and, and dark half of the year I'll uh, do a little video with it and, and show you how it turned out but this one it's just perfect the way it is and it's a joyful staff full of full of light it's beautiful and I just feel very grateful and it's very strange actually there's more stories to it it's a bit odd but I don't really want to discuss it it's nothing really bad but um, there were some lessons that came with that staff and I'm still like thinking about them thinking it over So, uh, the wands, I have some wood for wands, uh, some apple, and uh, some discarded pieces from woodworking that I thought, you know, I was immediately drawn to a few years ago. I thought those would be beautiful wands. Look at the grain, just follow this grain and, and release it into a, a full form. And then I never did it. I'm just waiting. And I've been looking at the OM for quite a while now. And of course, I'm pretty sure I have seen the markings on the Pictish stones before that, but you know, I'm just not really reading any materials on it. And I do follow some groups and some writings on uh, interpretations of these things. And I, I'm not fully convinced about the OM alphabet in its current usage and or the OM tree calendar but yet that calendar is so incredibly popular not that I have to do what is popular and neither do you but um, the the staves the OM alphabet still keeps popping up and I am drawn to it as I am with the um, ruins one ruin in particular the one for strength is a shape that just keeps you know coming to me and it resonates with me and uh, so there's there's something there that I need to pay attention to and uh, that's beautiful nothing wrong with that so we keep working on it. it's a work in progress we are all works in progress and I'm very process oriented in my my artwork and even in the the small amount of writing that I do and I look at Druidry as a process-oriented path. Uh, you never really arrive. It's just always working on yourself and sharing and trying to be of service of, to community as best you can and to do good in the world. You know, for the most part, I think that's more than enough. I'm really drawn to the idea of uh, being able to do uh, things like uh, marriages and 
and uh, naming ceremonies and to help people in, in times of grief, like with funerals. But I think that's a lot to take on and, and I think that's best just left to see if the process that I'm involved in ends up having that as part of that process. It is a service to community. I am very creative and I feel pretty humble in the things that I explore and that I do, but I am striving to have more confidence and uh, to uh, you know, be there for other people in a good way. I ended up, and it was a surprise to me, on the board of directors for our local pagan association, which is brand new. I had committed myself to one year of service to my community by being on that board and already it's been such an incredible learning experience for me it's already been a growth experience for me as well and I hope that whatever work I whatever I've been able to do on the board so far I, I really hope will be positive for our community and I think that I'm very blessed to be on a board of directors that cares so much to make this work uh, for our community. It's really beautiful. I feel very grateful. I'm very surprised to be on that board. I, I didn't expect to run and I didn't expect to uh, get elected. So, you know, life is full of surprises like that stuff. I didn't expect that stuff to come into my life either. So how beautiful is that to see what happens when you're open. So you always should protect yourself. You know, don't be so open that you can't filter out the not so good from the good and sometimes you just have to watch look listen learn and keep going in a good way right so that's my little blurb on my staffs I am not planning in any immediate sense to be putting crystals on anything or but who knows I might might be some other kind of stone but for this one pretty sure it's just going to be herbs wrapped with a piece of deer hide and uh, the other one that that's different that's different I even seeing bells on that one uh, the carving the bells a totally different treatment but who knows maybe I'll end up giving those that other one to someone I just don't know if it ever gets really off the ground that way both of them have been smudged both of them have now been used in ritual and under the moonlight and uh, we'll see what happens so very lovely and I'm also thinking of having different uh, staffs for different ritual periods uh, different times in the wheel of the year either that or as I mentioned before you know it could also be a wand and I, I've never really I've never used wands right uh, but I just am drawn to them. I think you should be able to use your own body and just your mind if you're going to cast a circle or direct energy. And that's, that's good for me. That works for me. And also I'm a pipe carrier. So, you know, how I've learned and grown with my, my pipe, my holy pipe from the sun dance is, you know, that obviously is going to influence me. And I do associate wands with the pipe somewhat they're different but they have some kind of relationship in some respects which is quite beautiful so I'm, I'm not against them and I think a lot has to do with your focus and your personal energy and your thoughts you know and your intention and I do also believe in prayers and uh, I, I don't generally use the term spell when I talk about things that I do. I'm, I'm not a witch. I am druid and I have these other experiences with other forms of spirituality such as Zen Buddhist meditation uh, in different forms and chanting and these have all been really excellent spiritual teachings that have acquired uh, gratefully over the years and I find everything coming 
uh, beautifully together under the umbrella of Druidry as I go through these experiences and I contextualize them in terms of uh, the history of Druidry and the current contemporary Druidry and my own personal family histories. So, you know, for this staff to come into my life is beautiful. My own father had a walking stick. He always liked to get a nice stick for his morning walks. And I have one of his that he carved. It's quite a lot of uh, carving in it. And it hangs over top of one of my doorways in a very protective way. He also used to carve, I can feel, designs into little sticks, you know, which is just um, interestingly visual connection to the arm, an interesting connection. Yeah, the, the apple in this regard didn't fall far from the tree. It's really amazing that I feel so drawn to uh, doing these things, and it could, you know, it certainly be in part an influence of memories of my father carving and uh, using the parts of the tree and his respect for trees and his love of them. Yeah. So, yeah, it's very special. We're not perfect human beings, but we can pull from, from nature because we are part of nature and we mustn't forget it. And holding that staff keeps that right here in my heart. And it's beautiful. So have a gorgeous, gorgeous week.